I'm Olivia Ross from Beef and Lamb New Zealand. I'm an Extension Manager for the Southern South Island. And I'm just going to start today off by very a bit of introduction, what we're going to cover, and also why the focusing on winter is important. So just a little bit of background to set the scene. We know at present that 79% of cows are wintered off the milking platform, and 46% of these are on support blocks, with 33% with graziers. And that generally means that 9 out of 10 sheep and beef operations are spending at least $16 per hectare on winter crop, which is about 86% of sheep and beef farms. So it's not only important that we get wintering right from an animal welfare and public perception point of view, but also from a financial point of view. So I'm just um, going to go through really today what the purpose is. Uh, next slide there, Hamish. So today's purpose is to be able to cover a number of different topics over the hour period. We're going to talk about changing practice and wintering planning, dealing with animal welfare and environmental concerns, and that's going to include shelter, lying and wet weather. And then also hoping that you can be able to go away today with the tools to be able to create your own wintering plan or an adverse weather plan uh, as we go into winter. So what's the benefits of getting this right? Last year we saw a winter campaign and we don't want to see a repeat of this again this year. We need to be proactive and plan ahead before winter arrives. We're doing some great practices out there already. However, some of these may need to be reviewed. From an environmental perspective, understanding our obligations and your local council's expectations are really important. And Nick Tate from DRNZ is gonna cover this in the next section. It's a real timely reminder now as we head into winter too, to ensure that you've actually done some feed planning and it's really essential that you do this. Measure, do a feed budget through to spring. Calculate what's your availability versus your demand. Don't just take assumptions. Get out there and actually physically measure. Take into account reduced yields. For example, the dairy hub got their winter crops in by mid-November, which was earlier than most due to the weather last year, but they are still behind by 16% in their cow crops and 20% in their fodder beets compared to this time last year. So take this into consideration when you're doing your feed planning. It's now a really good time to contact your graziers or herd owners as well, and check that you're both working on the same understanding of your demands and availability. Don't assume. Communication is really key. Is if you need to make changes, now is better than when that truck is rolling up the drive to collect your stock. Risk plans. Do you have them in place as a business? What happens if you've got more stock on than you initially planned? which a number of you do at present due to the COVID-19 and the processing and selling restrictions. And what happens if the weather becomes colder quicker? How are you going to combat this? It's really important that we plan for it. Good feed planning does matter, and the earlier you plan, the better you'll be prepared. If you need feed planning assistance, you can simply call either Dairy NZ or Beef and Lambs 0800 numbers, and you'll get a free stock assessment of your feed planning needs and any support you should need. So that support is out there and through a number of different rural professionals as well. We've been working in the wintering space for a long time and interest has only really ramped up in the last 12 months. And as a result, the Wintering Task Force was born, as you will be aware. Then flip to the next slide, please, Hamish. These are the overarching recommendations that came from that report. So animal welfare considerations, where animal welfare needs to be considered when creating farm environmental plans and support tools, such as your grazing contracts. Farmers continuing to receive support to implement good management practice, and well done, you're all on this call today, so we're ticking that one. An intensive winter grazing group has also been established. This group is made up of multiple organisations, including vets, farmers, rural professionals, and it has an animal welfare front of mind and is assisting in the implementation of the task force recommendations. There's also more active surveillance that is occurring, which is ensuring animal welfare standards are met. There are two main risks we see when, with winter cropping, and that's that animals can get sick from changing their diet from pasture to crop too quickly, and paddocks can quickly get muddy during the long wet periods. 
And these problems become animal welfare issues. So think about how you can best minimize these risks on your operations. Every operation will be different. But there has been some positives. We've seen some positive change and progress over recent years. Back fencing and portable troughs have made significant progress. There's been increased awareness of buffering zones and critical source areas. And there's been increased communication, which hopefully you guys have been seeing out there from industry. And you guys have also had a proactive approach to wintering along with everybody else. And this was really seen recently with cultivation flights that were taken, undertaken by Environment Southland earlier in the year. From the vast area they covered, there was only a small number of properties that they were going to follow up with. And they believe these were more from an educational point of view rather than a policy. So that's really good. So give yourselves all a pat on the back for an extra chocky bicky today. So just to finish off with this little section is in regards to, you need to address those wintering concerns now. There has been some new resources created in conjunction with rural professionals and farmers to ensure wintering is looked at as an 18 month process. There is a number of great resources available with both Dairy NZ and Beef and Lambs websites. And these are available by request. Uh, you can either contact your local extension managers with Beef and Lamb or your local Dairy NZ consulting offices, or just get on the websites there and have a look.